So this is a thing I, got, I do called Life After Death by PowerPoint. Basically, don't do these things with PowerPoint. These are the things that people do that drive me nuts. And the only way to show them not to do this is to show them what not to do. So the, the biggest one I see, the most common PowerPoint thing, number one, people tend to put every word they're going to say on their PowerPoint slide. <laughs> Although this eliminates the need to memorize your talk, ultimately it takes your slides crowded, wordy, and boring. You lose your audience's attention before you even reach the bottom of your first slide. <laughs> Second most common, a font size is important. Size matters. Too small, and that's not, that's not good for anybody. On the other hand, too big, and you're looking more. You just look like an idiot. Uh, don't have your fonts moving. Keep your text stationary. There's nothing more annoying than text that doesn't. Blinking, don't have it blinking, don't have it spinning, don't have stuff flying around the screen. You drive people with ADD crazy, they're just like, oh, what's happening, oh. Uh, it, the fourth most common power for me is like, avoid excessive bullet pointing, only bullet key points. Too many bullet points and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. This slide, by the way, has crashed PowerPoint. Apparently, there's, there's a max about how many bullet points you can have, and I, I said, I pressed it. The other thing you can do is have animations. People love animations. They have stuff going, zooming in and out and left and right. You get seasick watching some of these. And it turns out if you're a visual learner, your effectiveness as a speaker will go up with the more animations. But if they're easily distracted, they are not even paying attention to what you're saying. They're just watching the cool stuff. And there's regions to this graph. There's the simple but effective region, the active but confusing, the uh, effective but boring, the uh, active but ineffective, the dull but static region, the uh, busy but useless region over there, the ADD only region there up in the corner, <laughs> the useful amusing, the stupid confusing, the dull triangle, the hyper triangle, the uh, sleepy square, the dizzying <laughs> pentagon, and then everything else is just grouped into what's called pointless motion. <laughs> now, one of the biggest dangers today and I'm telling you, I, I hear it more and more every time I hear a conversation, is what I call SAOD, or Severe Acronym Overload Disorder. <laughs> and I made up this resume, but this could be a real resume in today's world. Look, I got an MBA from USC, an MSWE from MIT, a BSEE from uh, DU. I worked at uh, IBM, HP, VLS. I remember VI, IEEE, EIT, NCAA, NAACP, AARP, AA, AAA. I want a position as CEO, COO, CFO, CIO, CTO, CMO, CSO, CPO, CYO, VP, EVP, or EIEIO. <laughs> I want, I want to be the EIEIO of a company someday. That's, that's actually my dream. Hi, I'm the EIEIO. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Call me old McDonald. That's all right. <laughs> now, kind of my final point, uh, and this people do all the time, is they'll just have graph after graph just to impress you with their, with their graph prowess. And uh, I chose uh, acronym usage. This is my real-time acronym usage. It pretty much goes up and down. I don't know why you'd need the graph, but you can see pretty much peak there. I'll use some more acronyms later. And uh, there's just a chart that doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense to you, but I, I just want to impress you. Here's a, uh, an acronym, letter distribution. C's, I's, E's, N's, and S's are the most common letters that I use in my acronyms. Here's a uh, uh, pie chart uh, letter distribution. That's an, and here's, I have no idea what you'd use that for, but you can generate that automatically in PowerPoint. Uh, so I figured what the heck I did. Oh. Here's a line graph that I'm line graphs throughout my show. Here's a uh, bar chart number of bar charts. Pretty much goes up and down. Here's a uh, real bar chart. There's beer, wine, martini. That's the kind of bar chart I'm into. Here's a candy bar chart. Uh, here's a salad bar chart. Tomatoes, sprouts, spinach, and the different calories of each. Here's a sushi bar chart. This is a probability of illness, uh, depending on the, <laughs> what your favorite. There's a lot of detail in my act. Please pay close attention. Uh, here's a bar chart of the number of bars, visits, versus age throughout my life. Most people don't take the time to do this, but uh, you can see when I was 17, I had the fake ID, so uh, it was confiscated when I was 19, and my bar usage dropped dramatically. <laughs> I spend way too long making these charts. Uh, when I was 21, I went nearly every day of the year. You can see it was about 342. It's kind of gone down through the years. I plan to drink a lot when I'm 40, a lot when I'm 50, and then retire and drink constantly. That's my plan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here's a spreadsheet of spreadsheets, getting back to the charts. Here's a uh, spreadsheet of spreads, butter, margarine, I can't believe it's not butter, mayonnaise, French onion, cheese whiz, and Patriots plus five over Colts. <laughs> Every possible spread you could imagine. Here's an org chart of org charts, my main org chart, my sales, marketing, engineering org chart. Uh, here's your uh, reorg chart, every company should have those. Uh, and then this is interesting, this is my actual family org chart. Make one of these. It's important. Uh, Steve, our cat, runs our family. If you have a cat, you know that is true. Any animal that goes, hey, I just pooped in there, somebody clean that up. <laughs> Clearly head of the family. My wife, Laura, reports to Steve, I report to my wife, and the remote control reports to me. <laughs> That's it. That's my entire region of domain right there. 
Uh, back to the charts again. Here's a pie chart of uh, chart types, 3D charts, uh, bar charts, pie charts. Here's a uh, pie chart of chi pies for dessert, lemon, pumpkin, cherry, pecan, apple. Here's a uh, pizza pie chart. Uh, here's your pot pie chart. Uh, there's a better pot pie chart. <laughs> here's a pie chart with values of pi for the nerds out there. Yeah, 3.14159, 22.7, 3.14, and uh, pi itself. Uh, here's a, we have a pie chart. I was thinking, why don't we have a, a cake chart? So there's a cake chart. <laughs> why don't we leave the cake out? There's a, a birthday cake chart. There's a wedding cake chart. Uh, there's a bunt cake chart, uh, an upside down cake chart, and then really that's an upside down cake chart. And uh, all right, I think I've covered all the charts. Any questions at this point? <laughs> the fonts, we pick one. That reflects our personality. We're sending an unspoken message. So for example, if you choose carrier new, it means you're organized and structured. And like to pretend you're still using a typewriter. <laughs> if you choose comic sans, it means you think you're funny. And if you choose Times New Roman, it means you're lazy, apathetic, and unimaginative, and you always use the default. <laughs> now, uh, if you type in all small letters, some people do that, all small letters, that means you're quiet, shy, and unassertive. If you type in all capital letters, that means uh, you yell a lot. There's somebody over there. <laughs> if you type uh, small letter followed by capital letters, it means uh, your caps lock is stock on. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? Usually going along for a while, you look up, oh, darn! And then finally, if you have a mix of capital letters and small letters, that means uh, this is a ransom note and you are a kidnapper. <laughs>